Dobby? What are you doing here? Dobby's come to rescue Harry Potter, of course. Dobby will always be there for Harry Potter. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 smartest decisions in Harry Potter. Charles are really stupid. Probably people playing jokes. <gasps> what? Hermione, she doesn't know. For this list, we'll be going over some of the most fortuitous or forward-thinking decisions made by characters in the Harry Potter film franchise. Of course, a spoiler alert is in effect. If there's a good Harry Potter decision we weren't smart for excluding from our list, let us know in the comments. Number 10. Harry asks Mrs Weasley for help. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Harry Potter, like the rest of us at the beginning of his story, isn't exactly familiar with many things wizards take for granted. He has no idea how to reach Platform 9 and 3 quarters when he goes to King's Cross to take the Hogwarts Express to school. But Hagrid, there must be a mistake. This is Platform 9 and 3 quarters. There's no such thing, is there? Spotting what is clearly a wizarding family, Harry inquires of Mrs Weasley how to get onto the platform. Not only is asking for help when you don't know something always a good idea, but who he asked is majorly important too. Excuse me. Could, could you tell me how to... How to get onto the platform? <laughs> Not to worry, dear. It's Ron's first time to Hogwarts as well. Harry's question helps him establish a good relationship with his best friend's mum, who is also his future mother in law. <laughs> Number 9 Harry Frees Dobby. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Harry goes through many miserable events in his second year. Ha that can sometimes happen, um, but uh, the point is uh, you can no longer feel any pain and <laughs> very clearly the bones are not broken. Broken? There's no bones left! Some of these terrible incidents are due to Dobby, the house elf's misguided and often dangerous attempts to protect him. Why do you wear that thing, Dobby? This, sir? Uh... It is a mark of the house elves' enslavement. Dobby can only be freed if his master presents him with clothes. However, Harry isn't one to hold a grudge. In fact, with some quick and clever thinking, he's able to free Dobby from his servitude to the Malfoy family. There's a law that house elves are only freed when given clothes by their masters. So, Harry tricks Lucius Malfoy into giving Dobby one of Harry's socks. Dobby? Master has given Dobby a sock. What? I didn't. Master has presented Dobby with clothes. Dobby is free. Not only is this smart in the moment, but the grateful house elf becomes invaluable later in the series and even saves the lives of Harry and his friends. Dobby has no master. Dobby is a free elf. And Dobby has come to save Harry Potter and his friends! Number 8. Dumbledore Rejects Grindelwald Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1 and Part 2 The history of Albus Dumbledore is as mysterious and secretive as the man himself. That is, if we don't count his brother Aberforth, and somehow people never do seem to count Aberforth. I didn't even know he had a brother. Ah, well... Dumbledore was always very private, even as a boy. But we learn some key things about him over time. Without all the details, we still know Dumbledore was friends, and a little more, with the dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald when they were young. You and Grindelwald were as close as brothers. Oh, we were closer than brothers. Although initially taken with both Grindelwald and his wizard supremacy ideals, Dumbledore fell out with his former friend after a heated fight. During a subsequent duel, Dumbledore's sister, Ariana, was accidentally killed. What makes you think you can believe anything my brother told you? You know the time you knew him. Did he ever mention my name? Did he ever mention hers? Why should he? Keep secrets, you tell me. From that moment on, he cut ties with Grindelwald. Dumbledore's decision not only made him a better man, but one willing to stand up to dark wizards like Grindelwald, and later, Voldemort. Do not pity the dead, Harry. Pity the living. 
and above all, all those who live without love. Number seven, Narcissa Malfoy lies to Voldemort. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Throughout the series, the Malfoy family spends a lot of time looking down on people. But while they may come off as pure blood, self-serving jerks, they're not pure evil. Before the night is out, he will come to me. Do you understand? Look at me. How can you live with yourself, Lucius? I don't know. After Voldemort believes he ended Harry's life in the Forbidden Forest, he sends Narcissa Malfoy to check. She quietly asks a motionless Harry if Draco's still alive. Is he alive? Draco, is he alive? When the boy wizard confirms with a nod, Narcissa decides to lie to Voldemort. Dead. This incredibly risky maneuver pays off hugely in the end. Not only is Narcissa able to locate and reunite with Draco safely, but she's also able to take her son away from Hogwarts before Harry gets the drop on Voldemort and the fight starts again. Her deception helped save the wizarding world and her family. Number six, Dumbledore stands up to the Ministry. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The obstinacy of bureaucracy in the face of reality is everywhere, even in fiction. Been attacking Dumbledore as well. Fudge is using all his power, including his influence at the Daily Prophet, to smear anyone who claims the Dark Lord has returned. Dumbledore and many others believe Harry when he declares that Voldemort has returned. However, the Ministry of Magic refuses to believe the truth and encourages others to deny reality as well. I implore you to see reason. The evidence that the Dark Lord has returned is incontrovertible. He's not back. Despite continued attempts to discredit both him and Harry, Dumbledore takes it upon himself to keep supporting Harry and to stand up to the Ministry, even as power is stripped away from him in his own school and he's eventually forced out. The headmaster refuses to lie or capitulate. You seem to be laboring under the delusion that I'm going to... What was the phrase? Come quietly. Well, I can tell you this. I have no intention of going to Azkaban. While the Ministry's lie may have helped comfort the public in the short term, it ends up being better that the wizarding world knows of Voldemort's return down the line. Number five, the Marauders become Animagi. Normally, I have a very sweet disposition as a dog. In fact, more than once, James suggested that I make the change permanent. The tail I could live with, but the fleas, they're murder. Sirius Black, James Potter, and Peter Pettigrew all became Animagi, shapeshifters who can turn into animals to safely spend time with their friend, Remus Lupin, when he turns into a werewolf. Well, well, Sirius, looking rather ragged, aren't we? Finally, the flesh reflects the madness within. Well, you'd know all about the madness within, wouldn't you, Remus? Throughout the series, we see how this decision massively benefits them repeatedly down the line, not only does Pettigrew's transformation allow him to fake his demise and hide in plain sight for years, but becoming an Animagus helps Sirius escape Azkaban. He's a trap, he's a dog, he's an Animagus. As a dog, he's able to sneak past the Dementor guards, reunite with friends, and meet his godson Harry for the first time. The ones that love us never really leave us. And you can always find them. In here. And we're sure Lupin appreciated the Animagi transformations too. Number four, Harry lets Ron and Hermione help him hunt Horcruxes. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2. I have to start finding these Horcruxes. They're our only chance to beat him, and the longer we stay here, the stronger he gets. Tonight's not the night, mate. We'd only be doing him a favour. 
Harry is a capable young wizard, but his initial plan to go on a solo mission to find the Horcruxes that prevent the Dark Lord from dying is a terrible idea. Thankfully, Hermione and Ron convince him to let them join his hunt. I don't really think you're going to be able to find all those Horcruxes by yourself, do you? You need us, Harry. And it's a good thing too, because Harry would not have made it out of half of what he gets up to in the final two films without them. Huge missions like breaking into the Ministry or Gringotts would have been completely impossible by himself. What the devil are all you doing down here? Thieves! You gave up the Imperia. keys, you... Also, Ron would never have had the chance to brilliantly return to the team right when they needed him most. Horcruxes, like the Locket, may still be intact without the help of Harry's friends. Number 3. Hermione comes up with Dumbledore's army. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Yes. There's nothing in here about using defensive spells. Using spells? <laughs> well, I can't imagine why you would need to use spells in my classroom. The fifth year at Hogwarts sees uh, Dolores Umbridge put in charge of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Not only is she the worst, but she also forbids students from learning practical defensive magic. And how's theory supposed to prepare us for what's out there? There is nothing out there, dear. Who do you imagine wants to attack children like yourself? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Lord Voldemort? In an uncharacteristic desire for rule-breaking, Hermione devises an idea to create a club where students can learn and practice practical battle spells. He really is out there, isn't he? We've got to be able to defend ourselves. And if Umbridge refuses to teach us how, we need someone who will. Harry certainly deserves a lot of credit for agreeing and effectively teaching his peers new skills. Think of it this way. Every great wizard in history has started out as nothing more than what we are now. Students. If they can do it, why not us? However, if it wasn't for Hermione's idea, it's likely the members of Dumbledore's army would have been unprepared for the real final battle. Number 2. Harry and Ron go to warn Hermione about the troll. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Hermione Granger doesn't make the best first impression on Harry and Ron. Are you sure that's a real spell? Well, it's not very good, is it? Of course, I've only tried a few simple ones myself, but they've all worked for me. They initially see her as bossy and a little too focused on academics. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> she's a nightmare, honestly. No wonder she hasn't got any friends. <laughs> I think she heard you. However, while Ron's remarks upset her so much that she ends up sobbing in the girls' bathroom, a troll is let loose in the school. Harry convinces Ron that they should warn her about the creature. When they find her, the three students end up having to fight the troll themselves. Do something! <laughs> what? Anything! <laughs> Hurry up! Swish and flick! Wingardium Leviosa! Not only did Harry's decision help save Hermione's life, but it also solidified the trio's friendship. I went looking for the troll. I read about them and thought I could handle it. But I was wrong. If Harry and Ron hadn't come and found me, I'd probably be dead. And without her, Harry and Ron would never have gotten as far in school or in life as they did. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Ron faces his fear of spiders. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Letting Harry go into the Forbidden Forest alone would have been a bad move. Follow the spiders. Head <laughs> into the dark forest. Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? Harry rejects Malfoy, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Even at age 11, he figured out that Malfoy was the wrong sort. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. Hermione changes her parents' memories. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. She makes them forget so no one targets them. Obliviate. Ron 
sacrifices himself during the chess match, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. His clever decision keeps his friends safe. He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't! There must be another way! Do you want to stop Slate from getting that stone or not? Harry, it's you that has to go on. I know it. Not me, not Hermione, you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Harry gives himself up to defeat Voldemort. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 During the final battle of Hogwarts, Voldemort and his supporters take plenty of lives to try and get to Harry. The Chosen One decides to put an end to it. Harry gives himself up to stop more people from dying. Because he's a Horcrux, any attempt from Voldemort to take his life will destroy one of the items keeping the villain alive. The Horcruxes. I think I've known for a while. But I think you have too. <laughs> I'll go with you. Now kill the snake. Since Harry has no idea he can survive a direct hit from the Dark Lord, his sacrifice is incredibly brave too. You've been so brave, sweetheart. And as a bonus, his courageous act grants magical protection to everyone fighting in the castle. Ultimately, Harry's sacrifice protects his friends, gives him a huge strategic advantage, and allows him to finally defeat Voldemort. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.